Hello, everyone. Welcome to another session of Desmu 2024. Hope you guys are having a great time. We are on last day, day three. We still have a few more sessions lined up, but we have saved some best of the sessions at the last. Uh, joining me today is Sri Harsha, Engineering Manager, Open Source Office at Lambda Test, and Christian Bowman, Senior Software Engineer at OutSystems. Both are open source veterans as a committer across projects like Selenium, and both are actively working on projects called WebDriver.io. And that's our topic today as well, WebDriver.io version nine. We're gonna discuss browser automation's future. Now, before I hand over the stage to Sri and Christian, a few things I wanted to discuss first, all of these sessions would be recorded and they would be there on the AirMeet platform for a few hours. And after end of the conference, we'll be sharing them on our Lamites YouTube channel. So feel free to check out the sessions over there as well. Uh, in your right side, you will find a Q&A panel. So if you have any questions, feel free to add them over there. And at the end of the session, we'll, if the time permits, we'll try to, try to take them. Uh, do spam the reactions button below. It gives a lot of motivation to us and speakers and uh, really appreciate your efforts over there. And last, uh, so this is something I think all the testers around here will pretty much love as well, the word feedback. So we are at the last stages of TestMe conference and we would really love your feedback on how your experience has been, the quality of sessions and uh, what we could have done better, what went wrong. We are really hoping to hear from you. Feel free to show your love over our social media platforms. Use the hashtag TestMeConf and uh, we'll be monitoring that. So we'll be happy to hear your feedback. And yeah, so that's more of it. So guys, Sri and Christian, the stage is all yours. Awesome, thank you so much for the introduction. <clears throat> Can you all see my screen? Yes, it's visible. Awesome. Yeah, welcome to the session. Um, me and Sri are excited to talk with you about the latest WebDriver.io release that we pushed out just last week and we introduced a lot of awesome features and um, that we want to discuss today <clears throat> and get you some feedback and background about, you know, what this new era of browser automation will look like and, um, you know, how it's just powered. Um, I will introduce myself real quick. Um, I, you know, I'm a software engineer at um, OutSystems. I'm currently working on the Stencil team, which is a web component framework. And it's helped me a little bit as my guinea pig to improve some of the web component features that we have on WebDriver to test web components. Um, so we will talk about this a little bit later. Um, and then I have three on my side. Three, you want to introduce yourself? Yep. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Oh, I think three. Oh, he comes back. Hello. Uh, hey, Chris, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. yes. Hi. Yeah, you're back on stage. Yeah. So this is Sri Harsha working as Open Source Engineering Manager at Lambda Test. I love to hack on JavaScript tools. I'm mainly contributing to the Selenium and WebDriver projects. Awesome. Awesome, Ola. Um, our agenda today is a little bit talk about the WebDriver project in general for people who don't know WebDriver yet. And we will talk about what WebDriver is and what WebDriver Bida is, like both the protocols are powering the project and allow browser automation across all the browsers. We will give a little bit of insight about the new Bida features that we added into WebDriver.io, talk about some breaking changes and what's gonna be next with the project. So WebDriver has been around for a while. I don't know if you know that, but WebDriver has been the second package on NPM that has been for around for browser testing. Uh, so it has been, re the first release was in 2012 by a Swedish guy called Camilo Tapia. Uh, back in the days, it was called WebDriver.js, and it was, again, one of the first libraries that would allow browser automation using the JS and wire protocol and the primitives that Selenium would bring back in the days. Um, in 2014, we established the project as the WebDriver.io and eventually moved it to the JS Foundation, uh, which is today the OpenJS Foundation uh, a foundation that umbrella that hosts a lot of other popular JavaScript projects like Node.js, uh, ESLint, um, Webpack, uh, you name it. Um, they all help us to develop the project and grow the project and govern the project in a way that it allows everyone to participate equally and uh, helps to keep the project around for essentially forever. <clears throat> 
we then, you know, had some major improvements on the project. We rewrote it into TypeScript. We up modernized the code base and migrated to ESM. Um, just this year, we started a contributor stipend program, which essentially allows us to pay back to every person who contributes to the project. Um, so um, if you make or if you raise a pull request to Reptile, being it a documentation update or a feature or a bug fix, we will expense your time um, with some money for it. And yeah, just um, it says today, but it actually was last week, um, we released Reptile version nine. Um, some numbers on the project, the web server NPM package has about 1.5 million weekly downloads. It's about to surpass the Selenium package um, and it's continued to grow. Um, we have about 9,000 stars on GitHub. Um, we have about $4,600 monthly funding that we um, separate across different project initiatives to maintainers that contribute to the project, as well as some third party control collaborators who contribute bug fixes and features. We have about 3,000 daily website visitors, um, a big community of 2,000 people on Discord. Um, we invite everyone to contribute to Reptile.io and we have gained uh, almost 600 total unique contributors to the project, which is awesome. Um, as a team members that have been contributing multiple times and we invited them to join the team, we have about 68 of them now um, and about 45 different plugins that you can use with the test runner to do things like VS code testing, browser extension testing, electron testing, visual testing, accessibility and API testing, um, everything with, is possible with Reptile.io. Um, at this date, I want to uh, thank our sponsors um, um, that helped the uh, development of the project. Um, Sossips and Browsetech are our top, but also Lambda Test, who is our silver sponsor, and actually has started um, the initiative to make sponsoring a thing in WebDriver, and they, so they kicked a lot of these initiatives out. And thanks to kind of Lambda Test, we have now a much bigger set of sponsors to the project. So I want to emphasize this once again, like we really pay out every contributor. Um, so every pull request, the person who reviews the pull request uh, attaches an uh, amount of money based on the complexity and the time spent working on the pull request. And so you can get between like 15 and $200, uh, you can get money back. Um, and if you, um, you know, since the, we started the stipend program, we paid out about $1,500 and there's much more money um, that we want to pay out uh, so we're looking for people who are interested to contribute. Um, once you make more contribution, you can join our team and you can up, can make up to 50 or $80 an hour, uh, which is a pretty decent, um, you know, payout. Um, and so, yeah, it, it can be all sorts of contribution. Um, if you want to help us on the uh, documentation website, help us to migrate our current website to a better state, um, help us with documentation, help us with translations, all of these efforts can be paid out. So one of the main interesting features that WebDriver 9 has is the WebDriver BiDi. So WebDriver BiDi has a lot of advantages over the uh, classic WebDriver. So in order to understand the WebDriver BiDi, firstly, we will understand how WebDriver Classic works in the current WebDriver I V8 feature. So assume there is a uh, factory for you, like, you know, you are uh, working remotely and you own a factory. In order to send the instructions to your factory, you hire an agent and that agent, you send the instruction to the agent and the agent is responsible to carry your instructions to the factory. So what happens is the agent can carry only one request and transfer it to your factory and get the response from the factory back to you. So in this process, what happens is you are able to send only one request through agent and you have to actually wait for the agent to get the response in order to send another request. So assume this is the same, like, you know, we can uh, see the same implementation in the how WebDriver works. Next question. So as you, uh, you are performing a click operation and uh, what we need is the web driver client bindings and we need a browser driver and we need a browser at the end, right? So as you, we are performing a click operation, what happens is uh, when we perform a click operation, we send the uh, endpoint for the click and we need uh, the element ID, right? So when WebDriver I will actually start sending this command to the uh, browser driver, browser driver carries this instruction to your browser. But if you see here, browser driver is executing the instructions at the client server side, the Chromium side, the browser side, but the it is still waiting for the response to get back from the driver. When the operation is completed at the Chromium side, 
it now carries the response to your client bindings or the web driver I want. So in order to uh, send the next instruction in the standard web driver protocol or the traditional protocol, the HTTP request actually need to wait for the response in order to send another request. So due to this, there is a latency and efficiency in sending the request. So now to overcome this, we have the web driver by die. So web driver by die is a new bidirectional protocol which works on the WebSocket connection and it gets connected to multiple things at the same time. So we can do the same operation or we can consider the same implementation with the web driver by die. Now, uh, considering if the web driver uh, IO has web driver by die things and we are passing the instruction, the same instruction here, the web driver by die instruction, the browser context or navigate. So the instruction is sent to the browser driver and the browser driver is executing the instruction at the browser side. But in web driver by the what happens is as it is the uh, bidirectional communication, the communication is open and it can actually send multiple requests without waiting for the responses from the browser end. So this is how web driver can actually leverage or uh, like you know, make your scripts more faster and uh, send your more uh, commands to the browser driver and execute the browser end. So this is all about the web, web driver by die. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, and, yeah, and um, with these capabilities and the advantages of the new communication approach uh, with Bidai, we are able to implement a lot of features that you probably also are familiar if you have been using Playwright or Cypress before. They have been, been possible there, but it hasn't been possible in web driver, uh, web driver based clients like Selenium, Nightwatch, or web driver o, which are now possible thanks to the upgrade of the protocol. One of the first features that we shipped in version nine and that you know i think will help a lot when it comes to testing especially web component heavy application is that web driver now allows us to automatically pierce through all the shadow routes if you look at the traditional way of testing sh shadow routes what we have is like a bunch of custom elements where we are not able to access the uh, the elements within the shadow route based on the nature of well how web components are implemented and structured uh, in, uh, in the browser um, so if we would ask to click on the click me button element, we would not get to it because the browser cannot or web driver would we're not was not able to give us um, that element because it is not able to get within the shadow root of the certain custom components. So what we do to circumvent that the web driver classic protocol implemented a shadow command that would allow us to look into do a lookup in the shadow component uh, or the shadow root of a web component. But this is also not really used working perfectly because it kind of like has to require us to know the structure of the dorm to understand how we get to a certain element. And then if our application application changes the tree structure, there could be possible ways that where, you know, there's a new web custom component implemented that wraps our target component where we are not able to access it anymore. So with virtual version nine, we now automatically do a lookup across all shadow routes for you. And so it's much more efficient way to basically allow you to access all the web elements on the website um, with just the simple, with all the selectors that you have available. Uh, for instance, the accessibility selector here. Um, and you can really like see that um, if you open the DevTools application of like a calendar, this is an Ionic application, a calendar app that has a bunch of web components in it, um, uh, if you open the dev tools uh, here. And in order to automate that, we would have written, we would have need to written a lot of complicated test code. Um, and with WebDriver, we can now directly target each individual item without having to do any like uh, shadow piercing manually. This is all done now by WebDriver. So in order to kind of like change the date to a different date, we would just need to target the element directly it's changed to december 2024 um to the 24th and then we set up to christmas um another advantage of that is now we can also use the shadow the contents of the shadow root to do snapshot testing so what was not possible before when we would do a snapshot test of like this button element um is because we don't know what's inside the button element uh, we couldn't do a snapshot test it would just give us an empty string with WebDriver version nine, we can now get the HTML of the inner, uh, the the HTML within the component, and WebDriver creates a, a so-called declarative shell DOM of that component, allowing you to do those snapshot tests automatically. 
So one of the feature uh, in WebDriver IO is we have a new URL command. So in WebDriver IO 8, we had a URL navigating to URL was straightforward, right? But as Baidai, we have Baidai in place. Now with WebDriver IO 9, the URL command has become more flexible and more powerful. For example, we have done a few key enhancements where you can send custom headers in the URL. And this is one great feature in order to send cookie sign if you have any basic authentication to perform uh, before hitting the URL, uh, you can, uh, along with the URL, you can also pass authentication credentials. This is one more interesting feature. And also, uh, you can also pass the headers uh, for the URL. This is one interesting feature uh, that you can use and the authentication. And another interesting feature is you, you can also send, like, you know, work on the hooks or execute the hooks before hitting the URL, for example, on before load, right? So what we can do is, for example, if you want to execute any JavaScript code or if you want to mock anything before hitting the URL, you can actually do using this command. So in the now browser.url, you can actually mock the battery status or whatever the things or API mocking you want to do, you can do it in here. So now browser.url has the flexibility to uh, execute hooks before hitting the URL. This is one great feature you can use. Yeah, another feature that we added with Baidai is we the ability to serialize objects in, in, in JavaScript. So as you know, JavaScript has a certain specific type of objects like infinity, map, or set um, that weren't really possible to be serialized before. So if you would send like an infinity to the browser to be executed there, it wouldn't be quite the same value. Um, so these law would turn false or null or would throw an error because they couldn't be serialized and deserialized. With WebDriver Byte, this now works. And with version nine, it's automatically serialized for you. So if you pass in these values, you will actually get these values deserialized on the browser side. So we have now a new set viewport command. For example, in WebDriver IO, when we use browser.set window, what happens is the command is adjusted the outer size of the browser window to match the width and height of the browser, right? So in WebDriver 9, as we have Baida in place, we have new command set viewport size. What we can do is actually we can set the viewport size within the browser area. Uh, and also, like, you know, we can also uh, match the device pixel ratio. So if you see in the right side, uh, set viewport size actually renders the viewport within the browser space uh, with the set uh, with, within the width and height and with the device pixel ratio. So that means now we can simulate different screen resolutions and pixel densities accurately, which is crucial for testing responsible designs. Another exciting feature is we have also the emulate command that is like you know with the, using the Baida in the in backend that you can directly emulate. Uh, device uh, like if you want to run the iphone 15 uh, kind of so this is going to uh, test how your application behaves when, whenever you have like you know have the various devices to test next please. yeah one one thing to add one thing to add here is that the difference between the emulate command and the uh, set viewport size is that the emulate command also set the view uh, not only the viewport file size for an iphone 15 but also you changes the user agent for you so that your application actually respects or recognizes the client as an iPhone 15. Um, and all these features are powered by one command that we added also to the API, which is called the add init script. The add init script is a, a neat way to, uh, similar to the on before hook that Sri has mentioned before on the URL command, it allows you to inject a script into the browser that will be called every time uh, a browsing context is being created. That means every time you open a web application or every time a frame is being loaded in your application. So this allows you to kind of like um, inject scripts that help you to set up the stage for your test. Um, for instance, they can register a mutation observer if you're interested in certain changes that happen into the browser, uh, but you can also use it to override certain primitives um, on the page. For example, uh, web APIs, you can override them as well as setting globals or any other things that you might need in your test. In this example, we, we are setting a, a mutation observer um, and the init script actually also allows you to listen on the events that come. And so the init script provides an image call, callback that whenever you call it, um, uh, triggers an event on the Node.js side, on your test side. So you can kind of like capture the events and things that happen in the browser within your test and wait for certain things to happen or like 
capture certain information that you want to validate. So one of the greatest features that we have shipped in the WebDriver 9 is the fake timers. So fake timers actually has introduces the ability to manipulate browser's clock during testing. So which can be particular for uh, useful for time dependent scenarios. So here we can actually emulate the uh, clock in here. If you want to test your application at particular some particular um, uh, particular time like 2021 or, or a particular year and particular date, you can actually set that and you can actually test your application. So here, the clock object, uh, it, when you emulate the clock, you see the clock object that provides several methods to manipulate the time. So we have clock.tick to tick the seconds and uh, system time uh, set system time to set the date and restore to restore the clock to its original position. So actually, you can use these fake timers if you want to test your application at some point in the future or some point in the past and how uh, to check how your application is behaving based on the time zones or time based on the e times. You know, the feature that we added is the automated dialogue handling. I'm not sure if you have ever heard, came across that, but if your application uses some sort of confirm dialogues or alerts, that can potentially really harm the automation because whenever an alert is thrown, the application freezes and you cannot throw any more automation commands on it anymore. Um, and so what we do, and we kind of like took Playwright and Cypress as inspiration here, uh, WebDriver now automatically dis dismisses dialogues um, and that pop up automatically, unless you create, except you create a, a dialogue handler, as you can see in this example, then we allow you to handle the dialogue manually. Um, but as a default, whenever there will be always, um, WebDriver will automatically now dismiss the alerts for you um, if you are not interested in whatever the alert is saying to you. Uh, so that makes automation less flaky um, with WebDriver uh, and helps to automate those edge cases better. So one of the breaking changes in WebDriver I 9 is how you access the element properties. So previously you used to have the single dollar and the element, uh, the, you know, the locator in order to access the element. But we have made some improvements using uh, adding the get element and get elements to uh, for the dollar method in order to mainly improve. This is done in order to um, make sure for the type safety for the TypeScript users so for the for their convenience. So this is one breaking change, and there is a removal of uh, XXX, XXX containing matcher. So now we have uh, removed the locator to have text containing to like you know uh, we have to have text and we are using the expert conditions to match the text. And another breaking changes are uh, JSON by protocol is completely removed from the WebDriver 9 findings. And we have removed the DevTools protocol and we have replaced it with the Lighthouse. And uh, we have removed the Babel integrations and the auto compile options. And we are now using the native fetch command to for the WebDriver, WebDriver requests. Yeah, speaking of new features, things that we have been working in alongside with the WebDriver version 9 update is uh, a lot of enhancement to the our visual service. So as you know, WebDriver has uh, a lot of tools and features around visual testing. Um, and one of the most exciting ones that I've tested uh, just recently is the storybook integration, uh, which allows you to test um, your whole storybook, uh, take snapshots and compare with each other uh, just automatically. Um, and WebDriver was uh, very fast doing so uh, by sharding all the tests in parallel automatically for you. And you only need to call one simple command to make this happen. And WebDriver stores all the snapshots for you and maintains the baseline in your project. So if you haven't checked out the visual capabilities of WebDriver, and if you use Storybook, um, I definitely would recommend that the, the best thing about this is it works not only for web, but also for mobile. Um, so you can automate either a web application, a mobile hybrid, or a mobile native application, and you can use the same primitives uh, everywhere. So I see a lot of users are asking in the Q&A, so what is the future roadmap for WebDriver IO, and what's next? Yeah, so we are not done yet, no. So there are a lot of things coming in WebDriver IO, and more WebDriver BiDi features uh, are implementing. We are implementing the more BiDi features. And also, we are also working on the existing features to have improvements on the component testing example. And uh, we work on, uh, we are continually working on the existing roadmap items that we have in place. We have, yes, we have a roadmap actually. And uh, in the 
project structure and the, where you can also see the what roadmap uh, what items contains in the roadmap yeah yeah one of the things that i think is uh we're excited about and we will hopefully be able to share more things on soon is the a dev proof application similar that you can see with playwright ui in cypress where you have an application that helps you to introspect the test uh travel back and forth in time to inspect your application to see why the click wasn't happening or why the test was failing at a certain point. And all these type of features are now able, thanks to Web Server Bada, that allows us to hook into the website, get the information that we need to implement this type of application for you. So there will be a lot of um, updates on that front coming up soon. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, one important point that I want to miss is that, you know, all of this effort, you know, takes work and takes time and, you know, takes interested people like Sri and me to implement those. So if you're interested in participating in the project, um, uh, please join us, join the Discord channel and join us there on the Collaborator channel. Um, the big difference to WebDriver OS compared to other popular frameworks is that WebDriver OS, you know, uh, uh, open governed. That means that everyone can participate and has to participate for it to you know develop and continue certain features which makes us great because this way um you know we never get out of um it will always stay around and people can rely on the project to you know deliver the job and you know provide you value for a long term so especially with the developer stipend program that we introduce um there's some money to earn on the side if you're interested learning new capabilities this has been the reason why i've been contributing for to web for now almost 15 years because i learned a lot of like new things about technology and it has been always been fun especially with the community that we have around with um so thank you for listening um thank you um for yeah um using web and we we'll take we're happy to take your questions yeah so i'll put a few questions on the stage chris um like can you explain how WebDriver iPhone V9 integrates with modern testing frameworks and CI CD pipelines? Um, so WebDriver is like any other tool has a CLI command that you can use to trigger it in your CDI, CD, CI CD pipeline to trigger tests to uh, operate WebDriver. You just use the CLI. I'm not sure what it means with test frameworks. WebDriver integrates is integrated with Mocker, Jasmine, and Cucumber. So if you're want to use one of these frameworks, uh, WebDriver has integration to them. Uh, we are not planning necessarily to add more right now because all of these frameworks where we provide you everything you really need. There's no need to add, for instance, Jest or Vitest because those are more unit test focused features of frameworks. Uh, so for now, we, we will stick with Marker, Jasmine and Cucumber and eventually we'll add new ones when, if you want to contribute one, you, you're of course always welcome to do so. So I believe like, you know, WebDriver Evo has a lot of flexibility to integrate the CI CD pipeline. So uh, it is quite possible. And like, there, there is no, no such thing as blocker. And we have a lot of services in place. We can directly, which are directly integrated and we, you can directly use it. So coming to the next question. So what are the key new features in WebDriver Evo V9 and how can they improve our browser automation? Maybe I can answer this partially. So one of the key new features is WebDriver Bidai. So it is going to revolutionize the browser automation. So WebDriver Evo has WebDriver Bidai already in place, and it is using in the behind the scenes when you're executing the when you're executing the scripts. So that how your browser automation is made fast and effective. So this is one key feature I can say. Do you have anything, Chris? No, that's that was perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So. Can you share insights into the future direction of the WebDriver IO and how it plans to stay ahead in the rapidly evolving testing industry? Sure. So again, as I mentioned before, we our current focus in development is uh, you know adding more BIDA features as they are become available in the browser, and uh, you know open up these opportunities, implementing tools that allow you to introspect the test better, um, and um, there the possibilities are essentially endless. Um, if you're interested in adding features to the framework, you're welcome to do so. Um, we, we, you know, the, the project list from the contribution of others. And so far we had some great contribution that make, for instance, electron testing very easy. Um, and I'm confident that there will be more people coming around that enhance the framework with features that they needed 
um, and they can share with other users of the web server uh, project. Yep. So another question, how does WebDriver V9's approach to browser automation compare with other popular tools like Selenium or Cypress? So I can answer this partially. So Cypress works on the CDP protocol behind the scenes. So it's a different protocol rather than the WebDriver protocol, standard WebDriver protocol. And Selenium and WebDriver Ivo uses the same classic WebDriver protocol. And these both projects has already uh, implementing the WebDriver by die. So WebDriver uh, Ivo 9 approach is a bit different than Selenium, I can say. Uh, Chris, any, any thoughts on this? Um. Yeah, I mean, WebDriver has always been based on the WebDriver protocol that allows you to do the automation across all browser in the same way and allows you that one test just works the same as in, in Chrome than in, for instance, Firefox. And so WebDriver will continue to stay, you know, to invest in the WebDriver specification and focus on web standards for automation. Great. Thank you for answering that. So, uh... How does WebDriver I will handle waiting for elements to appear or become interactive? Um, I, can, I can take this. Um, uh, one, one feature that we added in WebDriver that actually hasn't been mentioned in the talk is that we have now an automatic handling for um, elements to be interactable. Um, so that always that all happens in the background. So if you fetch an element, you can always fetch an element. Um, and uh, it, WebDriver tries to resolve um, the, the the element reference to it once you interact with it. So if you fetch an element and you want to click on it, then WebDriver will make sure that the element is visible, the element can be interacted with. And if it doesn't, it waits a little bit automatically for it to become interactable. And if it hits a certain threshold, like a timeout, um, then it will record, like tell you, hey, this element is not interactable. Um, and this might be the reason. So we're working also on features that will help you to also better understand why certain elements are not interactable. Great. So how does the TypeScript runtime environment improve core maintainability and type safety in WebDriver projects? So whatever I've seen in the WebDriver V9, Chris, Chris has made a lot of changes in the TypeScript compatibility and made uh, TypeScript runtime more faster. And there are better typings available for the users for that to handle the elements and to handle the actions. So this change has been done in the WebDriver V9. So, um, Chris, anything you want to add on the TypeScript side? Uh, yeah, we also have replaced um, our TypeScript runtime when you run the test. We have been using TS Node before, and we are now using TSX, which is a different runtime bundle, which uh, will provide you also more performance improvements for a running test. But those are usually marginal because the, the performance are usually the, the, the communication with the browser is usually the, the, the thing that takes the month, most of the time when you run tests. Okay, so another question, which key feature will be game changers for the rival? There are a lot, I cannot answer one. Maybe the Baidai. Yeah, I mean, a lot of features that we have now with Baidai, especially our new selector engine that will allow you to um, just query all elements that you have on the page regarding within the shadow root or not. We are working also to make this possible with iframes. So we want users to just select an element within an iframe without having to switch to it. Um, there's still some things that we have to figure out um, to, do, to make this happen. But um, yeah, Baida will general, will just allow us to build a lot of new game-changing features on top of WebDriver. Great. So is WebDriver 9 version stable and ready to use? I can say it is stable, and you can start using it. Um, I don't see any issues so far. Yeah, there are some, th this generally works. There are some edge cases where we we saw some regression, uh, especially as we have rewritten our selector engine. We, we see some um, use cases where version 9 would break your V8 test. Um, so uh, you can try if version 9 works for you already, and then you can upgrade if not. Um, you can just wait for a little bit until we have some, you know, fixed up some little issues that we currently working on resolving. Yeah. So we'll be taking one last question uh, from the Q&A session. What are the key areas of focus for future development in WebDriver IO and what new features or implements we can expect? So 
I believe in the last slide, in what's next slide, we have already mentioned. We are working on the BIDA improvements in the web driver IO and working on the existing roadmap items, improving the existing features like component testing. Um, th these are the like the key areas of fo uh, focus uh, in the web driver IO for now. But if anything comes up, maybe we will be happy to uh, integrate and work on work on it. Anything, Chris? Yeah. And, um... Yeah, we want to make uh, we want to build better development tooling around WebDevO. So, as I mentioned again, the DevTools application that helps you to introspect your test, as well as we're having we're having some work around the VS Code extension as well. Um, so, those are all areas that we need support on. So, um, if there's anything you like to contribute, I'm sure we will find areas where you know we can include you in the development. So, just reach out on Discord and um, you know join our project. Okay, so just looking into other twenty things. Okay, then that's a wrap. Uh, thank you everyone for joining the session. And like now we are so happy that you you will be starting using the WebDriver Nine as soon as possible. And anything, Chris? All good. No, thank you so much for 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 being here and uh, joining our session and. I will stay around a little bit and we'll hopefully be able to answer your Q&A, the ones that we haven't um, after the talk. So I will be around. Sure. Awesome, guys. Thanks for the great session. Uh, before we move on, everybody, again, uh, want to highlight the importance of feedback. So anybody has anything to share about uh, the conference, the good and bad, we are open to the feedback. Uh, either reach out to us directly or feel free to show your love on social media platform using the hashtag testnewconf. Uh, again, I want to highlight all the sessions are recorded and you will be able to find them at our YouTube channel as well, right? So again, thank you everybody for joining us today and we have still a few more sessions lined up for you. Uh, thanks, Sri and Chris to share your insights. Thank you. Thank Mandy. you. All right, bye-bye. Happy testing.